customer success at kwp.com. So we'll see you up for On day two, and you've been speaking over crowds for two days. You end up with laryngitis, so I'll be using the microphone for this talk today. Yeah, you can use this, I feel fine. That is because I sound terrible. <laughs> so, most, the most important thing I want you to know about the hidden features of WordPress is they're not really hidden. They're really there for you to find, for you to use. Uh, but it's sometimes when we just jump in with both feet, we don't know all of the things that are available to us. And so, some of the things I want to share with you today are some of the lesser known features. Um, if you have heard of them, fantastic. You're one of the people that's unearthed them um, in WordPress archaeology, which is fantastic. Uh, but some of the little known features we're going to talk about today are looking at the screen options on different pages, posts, things like that. The help the help pull down. Uh, we're going to talk about post options, page options, uh, the host and page editor, what the quick edit can do for you. We're going to talk about favoriting plugins. <coughs> And then we're going to look at some miscellaneous shortcuts that might be able to help you. Um, if you'd like to take notes, feel free. But I will tweet out my uh, my tweet deck or my my uh, slide deck afterwards on uh, slideshare.net slash Michelle Ames. But I will go ahead and put that out there and for you as well. So screen options actually appear on many of the admins pages that we see. Specifically, you'll see screen options on your dashboard, on pages, posts, comments. Widgets, menus, plugins, and even on users. Screen options are going to include a lot of standard things, uh, a lot of standard options that you can see across the board. But they also include additional options depending on what kind of plugins you might have installed. So for example, if you're using Yoast or WooCommerce, you're going to see different screen options appear at the top of the pages and posts as to what you may or may want, not what you may or may want to include um, with what you're looking at. Your screen options are always going to appear up there under Howie. We're all familiar with Howie, right? So right underneath Howie, you're going to see your screen options and that help. Just click those and you're going to come up with some pretty neat programs. So for example, if you're on the main dashboard, you just logged into your WordPress site. I've got some animation running for you so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, you click that screen options, it comes down and you're able to toggle on and off the different boxes that you'll see on your uh, dashboard. So the things like the quick edit, um, the at a glance, uh, quick drafts, things like that, the activity, you can toggle those on or off. So then when you first log into your dashboard, you feel overwhelmed, you can take some of those things off there very easily. But then you can put them just as quickly, which is pretty nice. Does everybody notice the new feature on that home dashboard that tells you where some, what's coming up next in your area? So you'll see when there's meetups in your, in your area, something like that. So if you haven't looked at that, take a look at that uh, on that dashboard because it'll let you know what kind of uh, WordPress uh, events and meetups are coming up so that you can stay involved in your local community. Pretty cool stuff. So when you're on, you can post and you're on your post list and you see your list of all the different things that you've got in there. Um, you pull that, that uh, screen options down there and you can see all the different things you can talk about and off. For example, if you're the only one that writes in your blog, maybe you don't care to see your name five million times, and you can turn that off or off. But it opens up your other columns to give you more information. Uh, you can also toggle on and off your categories, tags, comments, the date. Um, and then some of the what you'll see up there now, like social share, SEO, readability, those are all coming off of plugins. So the ones you're going to see that have to do with, uh, with the WordPress core are the author, categories, tags, comments, date. The other ones are coming off of uh, plugins that I'm using. Some are paid and some are not. Um, but they all have a freemium version. So if you're using Social Worker, for example, which is a free plugin, in the repository, you're going to get those social shares. Uh, if you're using Yoast, you're going to start to see some of the Yoast things that they include. So depending on what um, plugins you're using, they may or they may not have incorporated into that. Uh, into that pull down. If you have questions at any time, feel free to stop me. You don't have to hold them to the end. When you're looking at the screen uh, for actually editing a post or creating a post, so this is a post on my blog, um, I love you more than WordPress. It is true, there are people in my life that actually rank above WordPress. Um, <laughs> but there are a couple things you can toggle on and off. So you can toggle on and off. Uh, things that have to do a lot with your 
plugins. Um, you can look at one column versus two column. So if you like having a little more space to type it, you turn it into two column. It doesn't get rid of your second column, it just uh, puts it at the bottom of the page so they stack instead of looking at each other side by side. So that's kind of a nice little option for your screen options. You can see all those different things. Um, you can talk about not the featured image. Um, you can look at additional settings, things like that. So there's a lot of different things. If you look at those screen options in every view that you have in your dashboard, you'll find some pretty interesting and um, hidden things for you. Like I said, they're not hidden. They're right there. Similar to the post list in your page list, you're going to see that too. Now this is a blog, it only has one actual page, um, so there's, you're not going to see a lot there. And if you're judging me on my SEO right now, please don't, <laughs> because I didn't SEO that page, I just SEO the one post. Um, so that's why that looks like a terrible second, no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> but uh, just similarly, you can turn on and off the author, comments, date. Um, and then anything to do with those plugins. Now, does it turn off the plugin? Of course not. What it does is it turns off what you see on that page. So you're toggling on and off what's visual to you as you look at that page. So what information is important to you versus I just it's just clutter to you. So it doesn't turn do anything as far as the functionality of your website and what your visitors see. It only turns off and off what you are seeing in the dashboard, so that you can better control what you're doing and what you're seeing and how you're using WordPress from the dashboard side of things. When you actually edit um, one of your pages, so now I pull up a page and you can see I'm turning on and off my um, one column, two column, it works very, very much the same as it does for posts because they're pretty much the same, right, as far as the things that you're seeing on the page for those things. Um, so some of those are going to be the same, some of them are going to be different as far as the layouts and things like that. Always things are theme dependent, so there's a lot of things that might be included based on the theme that you've loaded in, and again, depending on what kinds of plugins you're using. If you go to your comments on your page, similarly, you can turn on and off those columns. So you can turn on and off the author in response to, which shows you which article you're responding to, um, and the date that it was submitted on. And then one of my favorite things in those lists is you can turn on and off for pages, posts, and comments, the number that you see on the page. So if you've got a blog with 80 posts on it, and it's only showing me 20 per page, I have to keep clicking over and over and over to get to that number 79, or I have to remember what one of the words is and search for it, you can just change this to say, I'm going to see 999 posts on this page, and just scroll continuously. That's what I do, because I would love, rather scroll, I would hit it once, I don't want to hit, and then search, hit and then it scroll, scroll, scroll. I just change that to every single site I ever went into so that everything is showing up in one, in one list. Now one of the interesting things about that is, let's say that there's two of you working on a site and a partner that you're working on a site with doesn't want to do that. Well, this is very specific to the user experience. So if you are the, you know, your user one and you change this to 999, it has no effect on what user two sees on their dashboard. So it's very specific to the user experience so that everybody is able to uh, change what they see in the dashboard specific to themselves and continue to use WordPress in the way that best suits them. Now there's not a lot with widgets. Uh, the widget space, what it does though, if you do that pull down for that screen options, it changes for accessibility. And one of the nice things about this, so when we're, when we're doing um, widgets and you're clicking, you click the widget space and it pops down and says where do you want to put this widget? Do you want it in a sidebar? Do you want it in a footer? Do you want it in a header? Do you want a sidebar one, sidebar two, sidebar three, depending on what your theme is? With accessibility, what it does instead is it comes up, it changes all those pull downs and it just says text, add. And then the next screen comes up as you'll see uh, here in just a second. And, it and then it re you, so if you're using a screen reader, it can read down the screen and add, and it'll ask you where you want to put that. So it makes it a much cleaner experience for somebody who's processing uh, via auditory but using a screen reader so that they can see anything that's happening. So you see here, um, you click add, and then you click edit. I'm sorry, and now you have this list here, and the screen reader's gonna read down and let them pick via radio button where they're gonna put that widget. So it's a much cleaner experience for somebody who's using a screen reader. I just love how accessible WordPress is. 
not just that we can make our sites accessible for other people who need it, but the building in WordPress is accessible as well. Looking at your screen options with menus, you can see things that you're going to talk about about now. Let me tell you, the genesis of this entire talk was because in one of my first websites, I needed to click in the navigation between two sites owned by the same company. So I had a church and a nursery school, and they each wanted to be able to link back and forth to each other and open in a new tab so that you didn't leave their site, but you had a site in, in addition instead of instead. I had no idea how to do that with navigation because I would look at the menu, I'd pull, do the, you know, open it up, pop that open, and nowhere could I see where I was supposed to open it in a new tab. I'm searching CSS, I'm searching, I'm trying to figure out how I'm supposed to have to code this thing and make it work. So I Googled it, lo and behold, screen options, and all you have to do is click that link target, and now you have a little box that opens up in your menu that says open in a new tab or, or um, window. It was like the angels sang. It was one of the, I couldn't believe how easy it was. And so as soon as I saw that, I thought, oh my goodness, there must be so many more things I've never heard of before. And that's where all these hidden features started not being so hidden anymore. And I did feel like a WordPress archaeologist because I was digging down through and finding all the good stuff. Um, but it really was not hidden, it was there all along. We have this wonderful thing called the Codex. Has anybody read it, cover to cover? <laughs> exactly. And when you need something, do you go to the Codex or do you hit Google? Exactly. So it's nice when somebody can point some of the things out to you. <laughs> Yeah, so make target what is with your menu. So if you have your navigation across, the, let's say across the top of your, of your uh, website, and you want to add a special link that's going to open someplace else. So we can do that, right, through um, custom links here. We can add it, and then it'll go over there. But if I wanted to open that in a new tab, you have to be able to pull that down at the top and click the link target, and that will give you a little box in the menu over here where it says open in a new tab. And that way, when somebody does click that in your navigation, it opens in a new tab. I just tell you, this is one of those things where I was like, I'm getting this WordPress stuff. I know. And then when you've got your screen options, we're looking at screen options with the um, plugins. Really, all this does is toggle on and off the, uh, the description and then the number that you see in any one page. So if you've got four plugins running on your site, Changing that from 20 is not, to 999 is not going to make a difference for you. If you've got 80 running on your site, of course you're going to be able to scroll down and see them all. Um, but then turning on and off the description just makes it shorter so that you can see more per, per page as well. So you don't have to scroll as far. It's just a, a, a nice little way to be able to customize the way that you do business with WordPress. With your user options, we're looking at very similar things. So you can toggle on and off the email, uh, the posts, um, and just look what, what we're seeing in there. And I, you just see me listed twice there because I didn't want anybody, I didn't want my administrator <coughs> to be the same as my editor name so that when I'm posting as myself, people can't guess that that's the admin user as well. So that's why I list myself twice on my blog uh, so that I'm seeing different things to be able to log in. Try to make it a little bit trickier for somebody to hack me. When you're actually in your post, you're looking at creating a post itself, there's a lot of things you can do in that right-hand column. Or if you're looking at one column, of course, it's going to be below, like we'd said before. So in that right-hand column under where it says publish or um, update, right? So you're going to look under there, and you're going to see that you can stick a post to the front page. Did you know that you could stick a post to the front page? Fantastic. So when you want to you have all these different blog posts, but you want one to always be at the top, you stick that post to the top page. So I build, uh, I work on the website for WordCamp Rochester, and I want the one with all of the information about the upcoming dates and everything to be the one that's always at the top. That's my sticky post. Any other new post is going to come in underneath that. So it's always going to be the one on top. So that's something you can do right there. You can password protect posts so that only somebody who has that password can be able to access that post. Now, it's not as secure as per, as per se a membership site where you're protecting a page based on somebody having to log in with their own user name and password because this is one password that goes across the board for the site. 
If anybody knows that password, they can access that post. So it's, it's secure, but it's not as, as secure as it could be. So it's just protecting you a little bit, but if anybody shares that password, anybody else can get into it too. Uh, you can actually make posts private. Private posts are going to be dependent on what somebody's user level is. So if you set a post to private, Anybody who's visiting your site and doesn't have a user account within your site is not going to be able to see that page or that post. Anybody who is an admin should be able to see it because those are that's the, the most it should be, right? And then you can say who else might be able to have access to that page or that post. And then the really cool thing is you've got this publication date. So your publication date Usually, is that say, as soon as you hit publish, you have that publication date that shows up there, and that's what shows up in your blog if you're using the leaving metadata in there so people can see exactly when that post is published. You can change that. So if you want to backfill a blog, so somebody has come to you, you're building a, pay, a website for them, they give you five blog posts so it doesn't look like they've just started, you can, fill, you can post, publish them all, and then backdate them so that it looks like they've been blogging for the last five months. That's something you can do. You can also future date them. If you future date a post, it's not going to show up until that date and time hits, and then it's going to publish for you. Uh, so the publication date and time, it's a wonderful thing that you can actually um, you know, have an effect on that and make some changes. Also, if you publish five things in the same date, and you really want to reorder them, you can just change the time or the date that they were published, and so you can make sure that they show up chronologically on your website that way. Any questions on the post options? Guess what? Page options work very much the same way. So we have the status, status update. Here is a little bit different with the published, pending, review, or draft. If you have published a page and you wish you hadn't, go back and set it to draft status, and it'll pull it off of um, the front end of your site and people won't be able to see it anymore. Again, you can pass or protect your set to private. And again, you can change the publication date just like you can with, um, with posts. The one thing you have here, which is really beautiful too, is revisions. So if you've made a huge change on a page and you hit publish and you realize that you shouldn't have overwritten everything on that page, you can scroll back to the previous revision and redo it. So you can scroll back it's almost like going to the Wayback Machine. Has everybody seen the Wayback Machine on, online? Uh, I had a, a client whose site got completely hacked, was gone, and she said, I need it up again today. Well, it wasn't, I hadn't built it. All I did was add a few things here and there. I, I had no version of her site saved because that wasn't our contract. I was able to go to the Wayback Machine and pull all of the content off of her and then recreate her site in about four hours. Wow. So yeah, so if you're not familiar, it's archive.org. Uh, we'll take you to the Wayback Machine and you can look at the site. <coughs> for the private post, did you say you can choose which rules have access or is it a set? It's, it's, um, it's set automatically to admin, but there are ways you can use your uh, some plugins for uh, user accessibility or to determine what users have what access to have an effect on that. Um, yeah, so anyway, the archive.org is, is can be a really cool thing for you if you need a little extra help. <coughs> then when we're in the editor, have you ever played with it, literally all the buttons? Because all the buttons are pretty cool. <coughs> so reading across from the left, you know, you've got your bold, italics, um, cross strike out. I don't know, I don't use strike out that often, but every once in a while it's kind of fun if you really want to show something that's been changed somewhere you can use strike out. You've got your unordered list, your ordered list, and then your quotation, which usually indents, but you know your quotation is going to be different a little bit depending on your theme, because themes are going to um, you know, uh, style it a little differently. Then you've got your <coughs> justification, etc., your links, your break the link. The one that looks like, um, I always thought it looked like a road, it's, it looks like a striped road, is your read more, so you can insert your read more tag. Um, so if you're showing uh, your blog post on a page, and you don't want to show the entire post, you can hit, you can put that uh, read more in there. It will truncate that description there, and somebody will click read more to open up the whole post. Your ABC is your proofreading. So if you haven't used the proofreader before, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, you can click that to proofread your writing. Um, the toolbar toggle, who remembers what it used to be called the kitchen sink? I liked that. That was fun. It was like everything but the, oh wait, there it is, the kitchen sink. 
Now it's called the toolbar toggle, it's not as much fun, but it's almost the same thing. Uh, what that does is it pops up in the bottom half of this toolbar. So when, when you first install WordPress, you usually just see that top half and you wonder, how do I change from paragraph to H1, for example? You hit that to toolbar toggle and it'll pop open the whole, uh, the whole menu bar. So we have our paragraph, you can change here. Obviously, if you're, you're using um, text editor versus visual editor, you can use tags to do that yourself. But if you want to just highlight and change something to a heading one, heading two, you can do that with that paragraph. Pull that open and you're going to see all your different heading settings. You got underline. Oh, yeah, I know you don't know what those are. So um, we have paste this text. So if you've copied something, how many of you have ever copied something out of Word? Pasted it into WordPress and say, oh my goodness, it doesn't look anything like it's supposed to? That's because Word does some pretty funky uh, formatting for you that WordPress doesn't know what to do with half the time. So if you paste it as text, then you can uh, strip out all of that uh, formatting, which is really nice. Um, the next one is clear formatting. So you can also clear the formatting something. So they'll take out your H1s. They'll take out all of your formatting, turn it just back to paragraph, which gives you a clean slate to be able to go in and edit the text that you pasted however you'd like to. The special characters, so you see an omega up there, that's the special character. So if you're looking for special characters like an m dash, um, n dash paragraph marks, things like that, you can use click that special character. It'll pop open a little box that'll give you an option to pull different special characters into there. And then that question mark at the end says, hey, do you want to know what some other keyboard shortcuts are? Click here. And so that little, that little question mark will give you a lot more um, options and show you a bunch more things that might be helpful. Any questions on the editor? Great, because we have more editor options. So we have visual and text editor. So if you are not somebody who looks at HTML and, and doesn't like to work in a visual environment, then don't click the text editor. Because the text editor just shows you all the markup. You're not going to see pictures. You're not going to see layout. You're just going to see a bunch of text and everything that marks up around it. Uh, the visual editor is going to pretty much give you what you see is what you get, although again, depending on what your theme looks like, it exactly be what you see is what you get, but it's going to be a lot closer. And then this distraction-free writing. I, the very first time I ever clicked it, I didn't know what it was, and I thought I lost everything <laughs> that I could do, because all everything else goes away. It's like, apparently I like to be distracted, because that was very distracting to me not to have it all available. <laughs> But if you do like to strip away everything around your editor, you can click that distraction free writing. It'll just give you the writing space. Click it again and you'll get your publish and your update and everything else back. So it does toggle for you. And you haven't lost anything, I promise it's still there. Do you usually work in visual editing or text editing? Uh, I usually work in visual editing to begin. So I'll put everything in, insert my images, but then I'll do a lot of the editing on the text editor side of things. So if I want to go in and you know change a, a, change some links, I could do you can do a lot by clicking on things in in that toggle dashboard up there in the um, toolbar. But uh, for me, it's a lot faster sometimes just to go ahead and mark it up myself. It's really up to the individual user how they like to do it. If you haven't used the quick edit function, you should because the quick edit function can do some things for you pretty darn fast without actually having to open up each page or each post. So when you open up, when you click quick edit instead of edit, you can change the author, you can password or not password protect um, your page, you can change the date, you can change the categories, you can add tags, and you can change the status. So you can set it back to draft or, or whatever you need to do. And you can do this for more than one at a time. So if I click them all, which you see on the upper left hand side here, if I have, for example, I made the mistake one time. Don't you love that I'm actually telling you my mistakes? Because not a lot of us do that. Mm -hmm. I, made, <laughs> I made the mistake one time. I, I was building a brand new site for a client, and she had gave me all her blog posts, and I published them all. And guess what it said under every single one of them? Michelle Ames. <laughs> and it should have said Kelly, not Michelle. And so what I did with those 80 blog posts was I clicked one time, I changed it to Kelly, and every single one of them updated. I didn't have to do it 80 times. So the quick editor can be a beautiful thing. It can save you when you make a mistake like that because it's fixable, right? Um, and it's fixable easily, which is a beautiful thing. So it's definitely a lot you can do with that quick editor. And posts and pages work the same way with that quick editor. So I'm showing you posts here, but it works exactly the same with pages. Now, I'm going to show you the real hidden secret because this one truly is hidden. I've never found a button 
or a link on my WordPress dashboard that will get me here. But what I'm about to show you, you have to remember that with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> because if you make a mistake here, you will have to hire somebody to fix it for you. <laughs> this is truly the secret options panel. <laughs> so if you go to your website, whatever that is, .com or .org or .co or whatever it is, slash wpadmin slash options.php, you will see an enormously long list that you can change so many cool things and wipe out your website forever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. it, it's fixable. But you have to be able to get back to it to fix it. And you have to know what you did to change it. And you know what those, those things mean. So I will tell you honestly, the only time I have ever gone to options.php was to create this slide, because I'm no fool. <laughs> and there are other ways to edit things without losing them. So. Um, but because this is the secret, you know, the hidden secrets of WordPress, I have to show you the truly hidden secret, but then warn you. Be careful. There are other miscellaneous shortcuts. So we have some things that um, work really well if you don't know about them. These, these are keystroke issues, uh, keystrokes that you can do that will just make life easier. So you can go up and you can hit, uh, you know, the bulleted list and, and use the, the uh, buttons at the top of your uh, toolbar, or you can just hit an asterisk. If you hit an asterisk and you start typing, it's automatically going to do an unordered list for you. Isn't that amazing? I love it. Um, if you want to know a heading, you do it. If you want a heading two, you do two hashtags, and it changes it to an H2 heading. It's like, wow, who knew this was there? Um, same thing for heading three, four, etc. If you want a block quote, you put that caret in, and it changes it to a block quote. It automatically does that for you. You won't see the, that caret anymore on the visual editor, but you will see on the back side, so if you go to that text editor, you're going to see you know, the UL or the IL and, and things like that. You're going to see those indexes. You're going to see all those different things. Um, a numbered list starts with a period. Who knew? And then um, you know, the numbers underneath it. So bulleted list one, numbered list, etc. cetera. Uh, so those are some, some little things that are kind of fun. Other miscellaneous shortcuts are some of these great things. If you didn't know what a non-breaking space was, they were trying to figure it out. It's ampersand NBSP, semicolon. I know that's really exciting. You were supposed to do an ah right there. Oh, they were taking it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> uh, and so there's things that you can do. So if you're looking for, and, and you're never going to use these on the uh, visual editor side. These are always going to go on the text editor side. If you type ampersand and VSP on the visual editor side, that's what's going to show up on your website. This, these are, these are um, things that you're always going to use in your text editor. Okay, so if you don't know how to get the euro for euro dollars or the copyright, you can go in and you can go ahead and put those in on the other side. Yeah, it's pretty close. Some really good stuff in there. One of my favorite things, and somebody taught it to me, and I can't believe I didn't discover it on my own, was you can favorite plugins in the repository. Did you know that? In the, in the repository, so WordPress.org, if you search for a particular plugin and you really like it, if you're logged in, so you have to be logged into WordPress.org, there's a little heart in the right hand side of the hero image for every plugin and theme. And you can hit that little heart and it's going to, um, so that little, right next to the download button, you click that heart and then it's going to be one of your favorite plugins. Watch it go red. Yes! I know, I'm a geek. That's why I'm here. <laughs> You are too, because you're all here too. Um, so you can favorite plugins. Okay, great. What does the favorite makeup plugin do for me, Michelle? I'm so glad you asked. Because <laughs> on the next page. So if you go to add a plugin on your dashboard, so you click add plugins, and then you click over to favorites, guess what? Your favorites will show up if you were logged in. It's a beautiful thing. So if you don't remember what that Security plugin was because it's got some really weird name. You favored it one time, and it's always going to show up here for you. Now you have a little insight into what some of my favorite plugins are. Look at that, it gives right at the top. Of um, so that's a beautiful thing. And I we talked about this in my um, my meetup in Rochester, and this is the one that everybody always goes, "Oh my goodness, this is going to be such a time saver for me because I never know what anything's called." And what I just learned on that too is that if you put in somebody else's username, you can see all their. Yes. If you want to know my favorites, you just go to WordPress.org, look for me, and you can be like, that's what she uses for security. Well, all right then. I don't think I haven't done that for some of my favorite WordPressers. I'm like, what do they use for, hmm, 
Well, would you? But you know, <laughs> absolutely. And that's fair. It's good because you can look at each other's help, which is fantastic. And then the last thing I want to point out is the help. So up in the right hand, uh, up in the right hand corner, uh, next to under Howdy, next to Screen Options, you have something called Help. And if you click Help, you're going to get all these amazing features. So you get about, about pages, um, inserting media, page attributes. On the right hand side, it'll take you to documentation. Um, and depending on what, excuse me, depending on what plugins you have in, it may also take you to documentation for the plugins. And some of it takes you, it shows you videos on how to use different things in WordPress. Shows you some amazing things. So the help feature is there for people who really don't know where to go next and are kind of struggling. And maybe you never Google something, you still can't find it because you're not using the right terminologies. Well, here you go. You can actually click help and it'll start sending you in the right direction. So the help feature is pretty cool. That's a 30 minute talk, folks. <laughs> I'm on Twitter. I'm at Michelle Ames. Um, Slideshare.net slash Michelle Ames, and you can get all these different wonderful little things. Um, we still have a little bit of time, so I'm happy to answer. He's going to come show me the five minutes in about 15 minutes. <laughs> um, so I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Um, I'd love to talk about WordPress. Uh, if, you, if there's things you didn't see up there, you want to know what I do, I'm happy to answer those questions too. So um, open it up the floor if you have any. I just want to say uh, thanks for the heads up on that hidden options page. Because as a developer, I'm constantly digging through my uh, database, SQL Pro, or uh, my admin. And that seems like a really cool way to just like command up and find the option. Yeah. You want to see the value for right? My my big my the, my favorite thing is when a developer comes to this talk and gets something out of it. Because usually they're like, uh, I've seen it all, you know, but that's awesome. Thank you for sure. Yes? Touch on that archive thing again, yes. website. So archive.org is a, I don't, I don't really know who runs it, I should probably know that, but archive.org actually just takes snapshots of websites over time. Yours may or may not be there. And so it means it's kind of, you know, uh, hit or miss. Um, but if you, if your website has been around for a while, chances are it's going to be on archive.org. And you'll see a calendar and you'll see lines that show where the snapshots were taken. If you click that, you will be shown um, pages from your website. They're not always interactive, so you may see the, the home page, but you can't click through to any deep, you know, deep, any deeper. Uh, but sometimes you can. It really depends on how, what kind of snapshot they took and when they check in. Um, what's really cool, if you are, if you do have like a Facebook group for your local community, that kind of thing, of uh, WordPressers, look at the first website you ever made at archive.org and go back as far as you can, do a screen grab and post it on Throwback Thursday because it's hysterical to see some, the first website I ever made for somebody was all black with white text. I know, don't judge me. And it was for a singer and I just had her eyes just peering out at you from the home page. And I thought at the time it was slick as snot. I mean, that was like, just like, like I look at it now and I just have to laugh. And my own I was like, thank goodness my design skills have come quite a way since then. And that was a pure HTML site back in the 90s. So seriously, don't judge me on that one. But, um, and don't look it up, because I'm not telling you what it was. <laughs> yes? It's been useful for me when I want to have a portfolio and I forget to like get a screen capture. Yeah. Something that goes, like, just the home page so I can show like what a great job. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. It's really helpful for a number of things, yeah. for sure.